One of my followers on YouTube requested a watercolor of a cardinal, and I was delighted to provide one since cardinals are such lovely little birds, and we have a lot of them here in Vermont. I, even though I like birds, I never really go anywhere where you see, let's say, interesting birds. I don't drive in the to the countryside or the forest. But these birds are nice enough to come to me, despite my laziness. So I painted the beak with permanent orange by Daniel Smith. The eye with a tail of blue, that's a primary blue cyan from, um, I'll have to look it up, it's one of those, oh, My Mary, My Mary something or other, My Mary Blue, it's an Italian name, an Italian company, but really, Taylor Blue is pretty much the same everywhere, so it doesn't matter which brand. And I'm doing the black part of the bird with lamp black. Any dark will work. You can create your own dark, as many people do, or you can use lamp black or any other kind of black, really, or even Payne's gray. And for red, there too you have a lot of options. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little bit of the same color that I use for the beak. That black is not coming out very well, so this orange is looking a little sad. But that's okay because we're going to put on some perylene red, which is also a Daniel Smith color, one that I rarely use. I use Perylene Scarlet a lot more, but I've been meaning to use more of the colors that I happen to have in the name of not wasting too much. So here I am using this Perylene Red. This is an especially pesky cardinal. It's his. I could safely say his because female cardinals are not so red. His crest is way up and high. I'm gonna do some dry brush at the edges. He's a funny guy. I'm gonna drop a little bit more of that orange for variety. I see here that the beak is pretty much dry. That's the beauty of working very small. So I added some of the red to the beak there too for variety and then I'm going over it again with the same orange that I used in the first layer. If any bird deserves a bright color, this one is it. So I'll do as many layers as necessary. I'm going to put a tiny bit of the red in the eye along with another layer of tail blue. It'll give it some depth and some interest. But I'm going to lift a tiny bit. Oops, sorry tiny bit of the eye here I'm lifting to give it dimension and I'm gonna go back with the black because I do want it to melt a little bit into both the beak and the plumage not too much. It's gonna keep creeping into the beak a little bit more than I'd like. 
but into the plumage it's okay. Gonna lift some of this, lift. And lift a little bit here to keep the definition of the eye. See, in lifting, I gotta have a damp brush that I keep cleaning on the washcloth. I'm going to add a little bit more color, more red here. It's still wet. It's kind of fun. Also a little bit of orange. Unbelievably, that beak is also rather dry. So I'm going to add a little bit more orange to make up for the encroachment of the black plumage. A little bit of red here. And I am going to clean the edges a tiny bit. This turned out to be messier than I thought. But I don't dislike it. It's not as if I don't know that watercolor dries lighter. But every time I think, oh, maybe this time it'll dry the way I want it. But in fact, this one got light. As it's supposed to. So I'm doing another layer with the same colors. I use some orange on the beak, some tailor blue on the eye. I'm going to reinforce with lamp black the black plumage. And with my perylene red The red, characteristic red plumage. And adding some orange here for variety. And after this, it really is 